<laughs> oh, it's you again. Welcome back. Oh no. I'm Mark. I've been a professional artist for 99 years and uh, now I teach art for a living. You know, when you draw characters, looks cool and then you get to the background that your mind just goes, what do? Well, if you want something there, if you want more than just a white background, let me give you a couple of simple background ideas that will help feature your characters in the best way possible. Not this. Oh, not again. Quickly, let's get this class started. All right, class is in session. Pay attention. Here's a, a character. There's nothing wrong having a character painting or drawing on a white background. I do it all the time. But sometimes you just want more than that. Often your characters will benefit from having a background, seeing as it can often help set the mood. It can help complement the character's color palette to make it more aesthetic looking, or it can also help situate the character in a specific environment, possibly adding to the storytelling aspect of the character drawing or painting. But it can also absolutely ruin your piece. Let's just try not to do that. <laughs> I'll show you Three simple ways. Three of my favorite ways that I use to create backgrounds for my backgroundless characters. But without painting an actual environment because that's too much work. We're going instead for low efforts and big results. Let's do this. Ah! The first one will be the simplest. So simple, in fact, a baby could do it. Yet, it looks awesome. First, you'll want to pick a flat color for the background, but not just any color a complementary color to the overall colors already featured on a character. In this case here, my character is featuring more of a cooler color palette. So let's go ahead and pick a complementary color to that, aka on the opposite side-ish of the chromatic circle, or in Photoshop here, about over here on the slider. Now my character is very saturated in colors already, so I can choose a background that's pretty colorful as well, and I should be able to get away with it. If your character is not as colorful though, Try going for a more desaturated background instead, otherwise the background will steal the show and that's not what we want. The background is there to help feature the character, it plays a support role only. It's like the Robin to your Batman. Anyways, from here we'll add a cast shadow to that. We'll make it seem like it's a wall right behind the character. Now granted for this particular character it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, she's kind of like in water. But let's just say she's floating in the air instead. We just gotta duplicate the character layer, darken the version below all the way to black and scale it up a bit. We then want to add a subtle blur to it, just like that, and adjust the layer opacity down so that it's not too dark. Maybe even change the color from black to a dark blue or a dark purple, for example, if you feel extra spicy. Hmm, not bad so far. There's just one more step left. Let's grab a big soft brush and gently paint in a highlight on the background layer to suggest the light source responsible for the shadow. Hmm, that's hot. There's also the option to add a subtle texture to the wall, something like this random image that I found on Google maybe, set its layer style to darken mode and or something similar and uh, well, done. Wow, we ship it. That was easy. Actually, I lied earlier. The simplest background is going to be this next one. But quickly before that, if you want to draw or paint anything you can imagine, but maybe you're not sure where to look to learn the skills required to do that, Maybe check out my art program. Link in the video description and in the top right corner of the screen. Also, make sure to use the coupon in the description of the video to save a lot on the total until the end of the month. It's to celebrate reaching over 10,000 students so far. So if it's helped that many to learn art, maybe it'll help you too. You can follow the classes using Photoshop, Clip Studio Paint, Procreate, basically any painting software will do. And more importantly, you don't need to have any experience with art to join. You'll progress faster if you do, of course, but you don't need any to get started. Anyways, there's still a couple of days left to use the coupon. Don't miss out. Now, the second background, as I said, very simple. Let's grab a random photo. Wait, no, stop. Nothing is random. We always want to keep contrast in mind. Contrast between the character and the background specifically. If the character is very dark, like it features a dark color palette, a dark background will just swallow it up and that's the opposite of what we want. We want to feature the character. Generally speaking, if the character's color palette is on the lighter side, 
I'll go for a darker photo, or at least darken whatever photo I'm using. If the character is darker, then do the opposite. Now, obviously, we're not going to leave things like this. That looks horrible. No, we're going to apply a field blur to this photo. I say photo, but it could just as well be an older painting, any image, really. As you can see, the field blur gives this really cool fake depth of field effect almost. Just like in photography, we're always going to pay more attention to the part that's in focus, which in this case is the character, of course. Very nice. Let's also add a shadow in here to help ground the character better, though. It looks kind of floaty right now. Same as before. Duplicate the character layer, darken it, and then let's just use black this time and deform it to match the ground perspective. And I'll apply the same blur I did on the background and uh, done. Wait, no, almost. Before I can call this done, I always go around the character's silhouette to make sure that there are no areas whatsoever sharing the same values as the background. Areas like this. Ugh! See the color box there? This is basically the same value. It barely goes up and down when I point to these two colors. When I see this, I'll just paint the background lightly with a soft brush around that area with a color that will help reveal the silhouette's contour better. To double check if the silhouette reads well, you can also zoom out a lot. Basically get a thumbnail version of your canvas and if it holds up at that size, if you can still read the silhouette pretty well, then you have good enough contrast. Looks pretty good, right? I think it's a much more interesting image than just a plain white background. It's my belief at least. And also a fact. Now finally, the last background I like to use often is going to be a little more involved. We're actually going to paint something this time, even though it'll still be fairly quick. The idea here will be to create an environment to help tell a little more about the character's location, but without actually painting the whole background because that's too much work. I'm lazy. Instead, we'll focus on a small area directly around the character. It's actually a common way to display 3D characters. See, I used to do this in 3D as well. And this right here is what we're going for, just not in 3D. So what would that look like in this case here? Well, considering the same things we considered before regarding the color choice and the value choice we already talked about in the first two background examples, I'll start off by using very similar steps. So we start by finding the right color for the background to complement the character and using the right value to maximize contrast between a character and the background. Something like this. The silhouette reads well still, and so that's good. Let's keep going. Now it's all about the kind of story that I'm trying to create around this character. Who is she? Where does she live? She's a character from a project of mine, so I have the answer to all those questions already. There was context for her design, but if you don't have any, just come up with a simple background story. Anything will do, really. My background story here, just to give you an idea, is that she's this character living in the woods on the coast close to the ocean. So I'm thinking like a little bit of patchy grass and sand, like she's just standing at the limit between the forest and the beach. With all this, I'm just focusing on the immediate ground that she's standing on. A little bit of grass, a little bit of sand. Mm. Perfection. Five out of 10. Maybe we can add some pebbles too. Uh, oh, that's way better. Four out of 10. Now for the background, using a soft brush, I'm just going to suggest the light source again, very lightly. Sometimes adding a little bit of fog behind the character can also look pretty cool. Let's try it here. It can help to add some depth to the background. Does this read well from a distance now? Yes. Ship it. Done. So let's see what we got here a flat colored wall with a cast shadow, a blurred image color corrected to feature the character and a small painted area around her to suggest the environment that she might be in. All of this for the low price of one like and one sub. <laughs> I hope you didn't think this was gonna be a free art class. Nothing is free in life. You better pay up or the YouTube police will get you. But seriously, this is going to be it for this week's class. Hope it was helpful. Let me know in the comments. If you try these background ideas, tag me on social media. I'm always super curious to see what you do. I can't reply to everyone, but I do see it all and it makes me happy. Spread the joy. You can also download one of my main custom brush sets for free since you've been a good student and followed until the end. If you haven't already, of course. Link in the video description. See you next week. Oh.